Hello and welcome to Breaking Down Bad Books, a podcast analysing trashy bestsellers from a literary perspective, and today we're looking at chapters 42, 43, 44 and 45 of The Maze Runner. So where we left off, the Grievers attacked the homestead, and Galley was also there, and then they took Galley or killed Galley. <laughs> it's all very unclear, but Galley made a return just to make an exit. And that motherfucker of a character better pop up again later, because if that's the end of his storyline, I feel gypped. Where was he this whole time? Is someone going to tell us where Galley was hiding out? I don't know. And so then Thomas ran after the graver and then uh, all this hubbub. Anyway, he had this bright idea via Teresa telling him the idea that the maps might contain a code. And he's like, oh, no, but the maps have been burned because... Someone who's definitely not Albie burned the maps. And I I think we all think it's Albie because all the signs are telling us that it's Albie, but we're gonna, we're gonna trust Albie when he says it wasn't him. And so then he's like, oh no, there's no maps. And then Minnow was like, well, what if I were to tell you, Tommy, that the maps are still alive? We've got them. And so then Tommy's like, take me to them. Let's go look at these maps. Oh, so it's all coming down to maps. How thrilling. How thrilling. So we start chapter 42 with them taking Tommy to wherever the maps are hidden. Um, not, quite, not quite sure where they are. They just say it's a hidden storage closet back here. They could be in the homestead. They could be in the box. I, I, I'm not too sure. But Minnow has got the maps and he's put them into eight different cardboard boxes corresponding to the sections that the maps were drawn up for, blah, blah. And Thomas kneels down next to one and he says, oh, which one is this? And he goes, uh, just, just open it. And have a look because each page is marked with what section it is, Thomas. So he's looking at section two's maps and he tells them, okay, so the runners have always compared these day to day, looking to see if there was a pattern. You even said you don't really know what you were looking for, but you kept studying them anyway, right? And Minnow's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And Thomas goes, well, what if the wall movements had nothing to do with a map or a maze or anything like that? What if instead the pattern spelled words? And Minnow says, okay, mate, look, do you have any idea how much we've studied these things? Don't you think we would have noticed if they were spelling out words? Great point. And he goes, well, maybe it's too hard to see with the naked eye. What? Just comparing one day to the next. And maybe you weren't supposed to compare one day to the next, but look at it one day at a time. And Newt's like, this sounds like bull fucking shit. And Thomas is just regurgitating what we already know. He's like, so you guys have a runner for every map every day. And then they compare that map to the previous days for that section. But what if instead you were supposed to compare the eight sections to each other every day, each day being a separate clue or code? Did you ever compare sections to other sections? And Minnow again is like, yes, we've been here for two years. We've tried this shit, you greenie. But Thomas doesn't believe him. (laughs) He's like, okay, we need wax paper. And they're like, what the, they're like, what? And he says, trust me, I can't explain it but we need wax paper and scissors and every black marker and pencil you can find. And he's like, I can't explain it. There's no time. So then they're running up to go see Frypan asking for his wax paper. And Frypan's all like, oh no, you can't have my wax paper. I need that for baking. And everyone's like, how, how often will you be baking when we're trying to escape and we're getting killed each night by grievers? Like what, what, why are we hoarding wax paper here? We're under attack. And so then Frypan was like, oh, fine, have the wax paper. All the while, he's like, I can't explain it. I just have to show you what I'm doing. And Minnow's like, this better be good. And Newt's like, you got to get on with it, Greeny. And he's like, guys, okay. But I just, I can't explain it just yet. So then he makes them cut up the wax paper into rectangles. And he says, Teresa, quick, grab some of those maps. We've got to start drawing out these maps. And Minnow's like, what the hell? What is this kitty craft time? Why don't you just tell us what the clunk we're doing this for? And he goes, I'm done explaining. I can't explain it. I just got to show you what I mean. I need, I need you to see the image in my mind. You know what? It wouldn't have been that hard to explain it to them. All he had to say was like, oh, let's just draw on some transparent paper and we can look at all of the sections of the map on top of each other at the same time and then see what it looks like. That was like 20 seconds of explanation. And he's like, I can't explain it. I don't want to explain things, even though he asks questions of everybody. But as soon as someone's asking him a question, he's like shutting down. How dumb does he think these people are to not figure out what the wax paper was meant to be used for as soon as he suggested it? 
But you know what? They are that dumb. They're like, what does he want this wax paper for? What are we doing? And he says, it'll be easier if I show you. (laughs) You can just fucking tell him. And then Teresa's talking in his mind palace. She's telepathically telling him, I think I know what you're doing. Oh my God, that's brilliant, actually. So even she has a hunch, but could never have thought of it for herself. And she's only just now realizing it once they've got the wax paper and they're starting to draw. Maybe she's pretty slow on the uptake as well. So Greeny, he's like, all right, everybody, trace the last 10 or so days onto a piece of this wax paper. And when we're done, I think we might see something. And Minnow's like, oh, what do you mean? And, and then they're all like, no, no. And Newt says, just bloody keep on cutting, Minnow. Don't ask questions. I think I know where he's going with this. And then it says, Thomas was relieved someone was finally getting it. If you're that relieved someone's finally getting it, why don't you just tell them the plan? Just tell them. I don't know why you're acting all so super secret squirrels. Also, it's not that fucking hard to understand of a plan. Oh, I'm I'm so relieved someone can finally get on my same wavelength. It's not bloody rocket science, Greeny. So they just copy and paste all of these maps. It takes them a while. Newt's got sore fingers, whatever. And so then Greeny, he's like, all right, everybody, make piles of the maps on here on this table, separate them by sections. And then what we'll do is we'll stack them up. So he grabs the eight maps from one particular day stacks them on top of each other, and then, oh my God, what he saw amazed him, almost magically, like a picture coming into focus, an image developed. And Teresa let out a small gasp, because all the lines crossed each other up and down so much that it revealed certain lines in the middle. They made a slightly darker image than the rest. It was subtle, but without a doubt it was there. Sitting in the exact center of the page was the letter F. Okay. So the maze is just generating letters, a separate letter each day. But we're really depending a lot on the map drawing skills of these like 15 year old boys, aren't we? And like you, you expect me to believe that eight different people drew a map so accurately with such precision that everything's able to line up perfectly just as the creators had intended. Also, the creators, they'll probably send up that wax paper to fry pan because fry pan's like, I need that wax paper. It's the only thing that I ever get delivered in the box. They'll probably be sending him boxes and boxes of wax paper being like, when's this cunt going to figure it out? And he never figured it out. Never did. Um, but yeah, I think we're putting too much stock into the map drawing abilities of people who have been running on their feet for 12 hours. Seems kind of unrealistic to me. So that's the end of that chapter. We go to chapter 43 and Thomas is feeling a rush of different emotions. Relief that it had worked, surprise, excitement, wonder. Okay, that's like four emotions. And some of them are really quite similar, but yeah, it's a rush of different emotions. And Mino says, man, which summed up Thomas's feelings with one word. What? (laughs) You've got a lot of feelings, but man sums up all of them. I I don't think. And Teresa, ever the practical one, she's like, it could be a coincidence. Let's do more. So they do some more. And each time a letter forms in the center of the crisscrossed mass of lines. Just, you know, from the perfectly drawn maps, there's an F, an L, an O, an A, a T, then a C, and then an A, and then a T. So they're like, oh my God, we figured it out. It's float cat. The password to get us out of the maze is float cat. <laughs> and Newt, he's like, um, I don't think float cat is going to help us. And Thomas is like, well, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. So then it's actually float and catch are these words. Uh, So Thomas is like, all right, let's get to it. Let's get through the whole box of maps. And Minnow's like, um, no, we have to go out into the maze. Remember we're runners. And Thomas goes, what? This is way more important. What, where do you, what? He wants to study the maps, but he doesn't want to go and create a map that will need to be studied. Would not today's map in the end of times, the ending has been triggered. Would maybe today's map not be crucial to look at? Why would you disrupt the flow? Anyone can then go and retrace and draw a map and then stick one on top of the other. Get out into the maze, you asshole. And Minnow says, we can't miss a day out there. Not now. And Thomas feels a rush of disappointment. (laughs) And in narration, it says, running the maze seemed like such a waste of time compared to figuring out the code. They're inextricably linked. And he goes, Minnow, you said the pattern's basically been repeating itself for months. 
One more day won't mean a thing. Well, maybe it will. And Minnow says, that's bullshit. And I think we should also stay out there overnight and do some deeper exploring. Okay, now that's where he loses me because the point of running around the maze and drawing up a map should be to return that map to the glade to then study that map. But he's indicating that they should just stay out there overnight and never come back. And it's like, well, then who's gonna deliver the map? What's the point of going out there and drawing a map for no purpose? But Thomas, you know, he's been wanting to do a sleepover camp in the middle of the maze. He's like, oh, that's not a bad idea. And Newt says, all right, you guys go. You shanks go out and get running. I'll round up some gladers we can trust and get working on this. And Teresa's like, yeah, me too. I'll stay back too. They really trusted her quite quickly. She was in prison five minutes ago, but now they're like, oh, thanks, Teresa. Really need your help. And Thomas says to her, oh, like, oh, you sure you're okay to stay back? And she goes, if you're going to decipher a hidden code from a complex set of different mazes, I'm pretty sure you need a girl's brain running the show. And you know what? Snaps to your mama, I agree. This was all your idea and you're letting him run with it, but you're the brainchild. You should be getting the credit for this revelation. So they're like, okay, well, leave then. And so Newt's like, don't worry, Tommy, your girlfriend will be fine. Get the fuck out of here. And then Thomas felt a million thoughts go through his head in that moment. Oh, so many emotions and thoughts for poor old Thomas. I don't know how he's keeping up. He felt an itch to learn the code embarrassment at what Newt thought of him and Teresa and the intrigue of what they might find out. Okay, so no. Intrigue of what they might find out in the maze and fear. Okay, these aren't thoughts. These are, again, emotions. I don't think he distinguishes the difference between thoughts and emotions. Okay, let's press on. But he pushed it all aside. And then without even saying goodbye, he followed Minnow and they went up the stairs. Okay, well, you could say goodbye, Rudy Rude Pants. So then Minnow is gathering up the rest of the runners and convincing them that they need to stay overnight. And they're all for it. They're all like, yeah, that's what we do. We're runners, we run. And so then Minnow and Thomas pack everyone's backpacks with supplies. This is so fucking boring. And then Chuck walks over and he goes, oh, I'd go with you guys, but I don't want to die a gruesome death. But um, bum Well, great joke, Chuck. Great fucking joke. People are dying left and right, bud. The Grievers are attacking the Glade nightly. The sun's disappeared and he's cracking jokes. I don't appreciate this Chuck. I know Thomas has warmed to Chuck, but I still find him really irritating. But then Chuck says, no guys, seriously, be careful. I wish I could help you guys. So his tone quickly melted into genuine concern. So he was just ribbonous before. And then Thomas is touched. And, it, and Thomas bet that if it really came down to it, Chuck would go out there if he was asked to. And he goes, thanks, Chuck. Oh, we'll definitely be careful. Oh my God. This love affair between Chuck and Thomas, sickening. Thomas has more sexual chemistry with Chuck than he does with Teresa. Let me just say that. Oh, but then Chuck says, well, good luck. If your girlfriend gets lonely for you, I'll give her some lovin'. Uh, does Teresa get a say in that at all, Chuck? And Thomas goes, she's not my girlfriend, Chuck face because that was what was wrong with what Chuck said. <laughs> Just assuming that, that you guys are dating. That's, that's what's creepy about that. Okay, sure. So then they say goodbye. And then Thomas felt a pang of sadness. It was possible he might never see Chuck or Teresa or any of them again. And so then a sudden urge gripped him and he shouts out to Chuck, don't forget my promise, I'll get you home which is just a random thing that he said a few chapters ago that he promised he'd get Chuck home, right? And so now he's bringing it up again. And then Chuck turns and gives him a thumbs up with his eyes glimmering with tears. Um, is anyone else getting the vibe that Chuck's about to die? <laughs> I'm sorry, this foreshadowing is just too much. I don't think Chuck is long for this world. There I'm predicting it. And so then Thomas flips up a double thumbs, super enthusiastic slash dorky. And then he and Minnow pull on their backpacks and go and enter the maze. End of that chapter. God, nothing's happening in these chapters. I'm so fucking bored. Oh, I hate this book. Oh, I hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay, chapter 44. They're just running around section eight of the maze. They're making good time. Oh, oh. You know what? I was sort of saying like, Thomas, of course you have to go out for a run. That's your job. You have to do it. But you know what? I don't think so. They've already cracked the code. Well, They've got an idea of how to crack the code. Plus they've discovered this little pocket dimension off of the cliff where all the grievers are hiding. Maybe go and explore that. 
Maybe park your pointless running and go and do something worthwhile. And especially because they say it quickly became obvious that the walls hadn't moved from the day before. Everything was the exact same. There was no need for map making, property on capital M, or taking notes. The only task was to get to the end and start making their way back, searching for things previously unnoticed. Oh yeah, like that pocket dimension that you've already found. So if the walls aren't moving, there's no purpose for you to be there. And yet they are just running around. So after like three hours of silent bored running, Teresa telepathically tells him, we're making progress, found a couple more words already, but none of it makes sense yet. So then Thomas tests out a response and he's like, can you hear me? And she's like, yeah, I can, that's great. So now he can talk back to her, which is super convenient since they're not in the same room. And he says, I wonder why we can do this. And he's starting to feel a mental effort from speaking to her, like he's got a headache forming. And she says, out of nowhere, she goes, maybe we were lovers. Okay, okay, maybe you were. Is that something that results in telepathic communication? I've been with my partner now for two years and yet still not being able to talk in their heads. So, hmm, how can we, t- maybe we were lovers. And, wh- uh, and wh- what's the link, Teresa? And of course, when she said that, he tripped and crashed to the ground. And Minnow's like, oh God, what the hell's this guy doing? He's just tripping over, what a bad runner. And he's feeling sheepish, even though Minnow can't hear him. And she says, this is so bizarre. It's like you're a stranger, but I know you're not. Yeah, you all lost your memories. You probably did know one another before you got involved in this experiment. Like, uh. And Thomas is like, yes, yeah, sorry to break it to you, but we are strangers. I just met you, remember? And she goes, don't be stupid, Tom. I think someone altered our brains. Or oh, what gave you the tip off? The fact that you can now talk telepathically and your memory's been wiped. Oh, so, so I think someone altered our brains. Oh, hot take. She says, someone put something in there so we could do this telepathy thing. Uh, you weren't born with it? Or you didn't get it through sexual contact with Thomas? It's not a sexually transmitted superpower. And she says, and I think they did that to us. They altered our brains before we came to the Glade, which makes me think we already knew each other. It's like, uh, uh, uh. Of course they altered your brain before you got there. And he's just like, yeah, sounds about right. I thought the same thing. She goes, yeah, I've got some memory I can't quite grasp. I think we did something big. (sighs) And then Thomas thought about how he'd always felt a connection to her ever since she arrived in the Glade. And so he's like, well, what what are you talking about? And she goes, I wish I knew. I'm just trying to bounce ideas off you to see if it sparks anything in your mind. And then he's thinking about how everyone who went through the changing said that, you know, he's the reason that they're there and that she's suspicious and something's up between the two of them. And he's like, yeah, I've never thought about it. And he goes, well, maybe it all won't matter. Maybe we'll find an exit. You never know. Have you not already found the griever hole? (laughs) We found an exit three chapters ago and we've just ignored it ever since. So then she's like, okay, well, this is giving me a headache. Better go. And he's like, wait, wait, no. And she says, you know what, Tom, I'll just, I'll be in touch if we find anything. And he goes, Teresa, what about that thing you wrote on your arm? Teresa, you know, because she wrote wicked is good on her arm because she ignored the notepad that was beside her bed and she doesn't respond. She's gone. And so then he's like upset that Teresa's left. His stomach hurt and the thought of running the rest of the day suddenly depressed him. I thought you wanted to be a runner. I thought you loved to run. Ah. And in some ways he wanted to tell Minnow about how he and Teresa could talk to share what was happening before it made his brain explode, but he didn't dare. Throwing telepathy into the whole situation didn't seem like the grandest of ideas. Uh, yeah, nah. So then they keep running for hours, they hit a dead end and then they turn back around. I mean, thrilling stuff. They also stop for lunch and that's when Minnow says, there's no surprise exits. We haven't, you know, found anything. And Thomas is like, oh, I suspected as much, but to hear you say it, oh. Yeah, obviously you haven't found anything. Would you not have stopped and explored something in particular if you'd found something? And he's, oh, I suspected. Oh, I had a hunch. But now that you've confirmed that we haven't found an exit, did you see an exit? But then for the next few hours, they keep looking. They keep looking and then they find nothing. And Thomas grew more and more discouraged. You have already found the griever hole. That's clearly the exit. 
The only thing interesting he saw was another one of those odd signs that read World in Catastrophe Kill Zone Experiment Department. And Minnow didn't even give it a second glance. Okay. But I feel like because he keeps bringing that up, a page after he's just said that she wrote Wicked is good on her arm, I think, I think the hint is that World in Catastrophe Kill Zone Experiment Department spells out Wicked. Not too sure what that means, but I, I think James is trying to hint us in that direction. So then they, oh, they stop for another fucking snack. And then they search some more and they find nothing. And Thomas was beginning to get ready to accept the inevitable. There was nothing to find. Uh, yeah, you found it yesterday. Uh. So then as it starts to get dark, they're starting to anticipate grievers being in the maze. But nothing showed up until almost midnight when they spot a few grievers like ducking around a corner ahead of them. And then at one point, one even rushes past them, but just ignores them completely. And Minnow's like, I think they're playing with us. I think the creators want us to know there's no way out. The walls aren't moving anymore. It's like, this has all just been some stupid game and it's time to end. Well, yeah. How much you want to bet that when we get back, we find out a griever took one of them just like last night. I think Gally was right. They're just going to keep trying to kill us all. Which is just, you know, a great little pep talk for poor Thomas. And he's crushed. Any hope he'd felt earlier when they'd set out had crashed a long time ago. (laughs) What were you expecting? As soon as I got out there and saw that the walls hadn't moved, I would have been like, okay, well, let's go back to the maps. Like, we don't need to be here. So Minnow's like, all right, let's go home. And Thomas is like, okay. So he and Minnow made their way silently back to the glade. They didn't see another griever the whole way. And that's the end of that chapter. God, boring, boring, boring. Okay, so chapter 45, by Thomas's watch, it was mid-morning when he and Minnow stepped through the west door back into the glade. I bet they're tired. Oh, yes, they were. So the next line says, Thomas was so tired, he wanted to lie down right there and take a nap. (laughs) God, this is how boring it is. Ah, they'd been in the maze for roughly 24 hours. And he's surprised that the day in the glade was proceeding business as usual, farming, gardening, cleaning, everything was the same. And so then Newt runs up to him and he's like, what's the tea? He says, you're you're the first one's back. What happened? Tell me you've got good news. And Minnow goes, nothing. (laughs) The maze is a big freaking joke. And Newt looked at Thomas being like, what's he talking about? And Thomas goes, oh, he's just discouraged because, you know, we didn't find anything. The whole past two years have been a waste of time. The walls haven't moved. There's no exits, you know. We're up shit creek, mate. Nothing new but we're up shit creek. And he asks, did the grievers come last night? And Newt's like, oh yeah, they took Adam. And I, I was like, who the fuck's Adam? <laughs> I'm like, I don't give a shit about Adam. And Thomas thinks the exact same thing. He goes, oh, didn't know the name and felt guilty for feeling nothing. Well, feeling, feeling guilty is a feeling. So you're not feeling nothing, but so he's just like relieved like, oh, it's Adam, some guy I don't know about. Like, oh, oh well, <laughs> heartless piece of shit. He's like, oh, just Adam. Oh, that's fine. And he's starting to think maybe Gally was right that they are just going to take one person each night. Okay, so the creators are escalating things to try and get them to figure out the code or whatever, right? Like that's what we're sort of meant to be believing. But why after two years of just boring nothingness, are they like, all right, let's trigger the ending now. Let's send in the mind readers. And uh, yeah, that'll trigger their ending. I mean, we, we've had a great two years watching them farm and run around a maze and draw maps. Yeah, that's been a hoot. Like if these are scientists studying them, what's their day job? Because this is so boring. If I was working for them, I'd be like after one month of just watching boys farm and create their own society, I'd be like, hey, I could just read The Lord of the Fucking Flies. I don't need to be here. Let's trigger the ending. Let's send that bitch up. Oh, okay. So yet yeah, Mino's discouraged. Adam's dead. Thomas doesn't give a shit. Uh, okay, so now Mino's having a full-on meltdown. He's like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. It's over. It's all over. He's throwing his back back to the ground. He says, there's no exit. Never was, never will be. We're all shucked. Mate, you found a hole in the air next to the cliff, a pocket dimension. Just fucking jump into it. Like if you're that distraught at there not being an exit, maybe just explore that one little thing you found. And Thomas is thinking, oh no, if Minnow gives up, we're all in big trouble. (sighs) Jesus Christ. 
And so the newt doesn't say anything and despair hung in the air like the smoke from the map room. And so then the other runners get back. Thomas hears from them that, you know, they also didn't find anything. Well, big shock. Thomas knew that the code of the maze was their only hope now. (sighs) It had to reveal something, it had to. And after aimlessly wandering the glade to hear the other runners' stories, he snapped out of his funk. What stories do they have? They didn't see anything. They didn't find anything. And he's like, maybe I should, maybe I should go and check out the map room. So then he asks Teresa via his mind pathways. He says, Teresa, where are you? Did you figure anything out? Maybe she's where you left her. Jeez. And she goes, Tom, did you say something? And he's like, yeah, can you hear me? Am I doing this right? So they're not even on the right frequency. She goes, yeah, it's choppy, but it's working. Um, are you standing like in a dead patch? Like maybe move around, go outside. Get an antenna, I don't know. And she goes, yeah, we're still here. I think I have the code all figured out. Okay, what, you couldn't have said something earlier, Teresa? Radio silence from Teresa. And also, why is he only just checking in with her now after just wandering the glade, la de la da da Stupid Thomas. And Thomas is like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, oh, yes, it's float cat. And she says, get down here. And he goes, I'm coming. Oh my God, this dialogue. Oh, even when it's not said out loud, all of this dialogue, it's so shit, it's so stilted. All right, so then he goes into whatever room they're in. I think it might be where they used to store the weapons. Let's just run with that. And so Newt lets him in and he goes, oh, Minnow still hasn't shown up, by the way. God, he's a bug and hothead. <laughs> and Thomas was surprised that Minnow was wasting time sulking, especially with the code possibilities. And yet... You also, for the same amount of time, have just been wandering aimlessly. And he's like, I'm surprised he's wasting time. What have you been doing, Thomas? What makes your time so fucking precious? So he goes into the room. There's a bunch of gladers. They're all looking tired because they've been drawing maps all night. There's maps everywhere. I bet they wish they just drew them on wax paper in the first instance. Would have saved a lot of time. And he sees Teresa and she's telling him telepathically, you have to see this. And so then he's like, oh, I'll just walk up to her and ask a follow-up question. And then he's like, oh, wait, no, (laughs) you didn't talk to me out loud. So then he says back to her, don't talk in my head while Newt's around. I don't want him knowing about our gift. And so then she's like, "Ugh," And so she has to talk verbally. Even though she just said it was giving her a headache and the reception was bad. Why would she not just speak out loud in the first place? So then she's like, oh, hey, Thomas, Uh, come check this out. And he's like, oh, why? Hello, Teresa. I haven't been communicating with you in secret. Yes. I will, I will come over right now. And so then she says, yeah, I figured it out. It's, it's correct, but I just don't know what it means. And so she's figured out that it says float, catch, bleed, death, stiff, push. A grim bunch of words that I'm sure mean nothing. And okay, I mean, we're getting somewhere, but disappointment washed over Thomas. He'd been sure the purpose of the code would be obvious once they had figured it out. And so then he's like, that's it? Are you sure they're in the right order? And she's like, yeah, I'm sure. The maze has been repeating these words for months. We finally quit when that became clear. And she's just now telling him. Each time after the word push, it goes a full week without showing any letter at all. Then it starts over again with float. So we figure that's the first word and that's the order. Okay, makes sense to me. And so then he's repeating it like a million times. Float, catch, bleed, death, stiff, push. Just so so we get acclimatized to it. I don't know. And Newt's like, well, that's pretty cheerful, don't you think? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, oh, we need to get Minnow down here. Maybe he knows something we don't. What? What would he know? What would he know of these random six words? What? What do you? Oh, we got to get Minnow. He's the expert on six random words. I don't know. And he goes, if only we had more clues. What? Do you not? Do you not have a griever hole you can investigate? I just. Maybe it means nothing. Maybe the griever hole eventuates to nothing, and I'm just obsessed on it. But Jesus Christ, why did we spend? chapters of them throwing rocks into it if it means nothing and they're just going to forget that it exists does it just solve the mystery of where the grievers sleep at night because i'm not that interested in that mystery i'm sorry i'm not oh and then he he gets hit by a dizzy spell because he's got an idea a horrible terrible awful idea the worst idea in the history of horrible terrible awful ideas and that must be saying a lot because thomas has had a lot of bad ideas a lot of them and so they're like tommy are you okay and I don't know why he's reacting with an idea just by getting dizzy and fainting. So dramatic. And they're like, are you okay? You're white as a ghost. And he goes, oh, am I? Oh, um, sorry. No, 
Just think my eyes are hurting and I need some sleep. So you're not gonna tell us this bright idea? And then Teresa's asking him in his mind palace, are you okay? And he responds saying, yeah, seriously, I'm tired. I just need some rest. Maybe you need to stop telepathically communicating because it's given you a headache. And maybe that headache is contributing to your weird little dizzy spell. And Newt's like, yeah, you just spent all night in the maze. Go have a nap. Like, okay, calm down. Calm down and take a nap. And then Thomas wants to share his idea, but then he doesn't. And I'm like, please tell us, please tell us. But yeah, he does tell us. Thomas had a plan. As bad as it was, he had a plan. They needed more clues about the code. They needed memories. So he was going to get stung by a griever and go through the changing on purpose. End of chapter. And I wish I could get stung by something similar to do the reverse and help me lose my memories of reading this book. What a horrible fricking book. Oh, that's it for today, guys. I'll see you next week for Thomas going to get stung by a griever to then get stung by a grief serum to then go through a changing to then possibly remember something about six words that are a code written in a maze. What a ridiculous sentence. Also, like, Maybe just stick yourself with the grief serum and see what happens there first. Like maybe you can cut out the middleman, which is a griever and just go the easy route. Maybe that's, I don't know, worth exploring, but okay. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Send your burning thoughts, frustrations, and grievances on this latest chapter of this shitty book to breakingdownpod at gmail.com or on Twitter at podbreakingdown and Instagram at breakingdownbadbooks. You can visit www.breakingdownbadbooks.com for all the listen links, contact information, merch, and more. To support the show on Patreon and gain access to exclusive ad-free bonus episodes, visit patreon.com slash breakingdownbadbooks. Ratings and reviews on your preferred podcast platform are also a fun, free way to support the show. Breaking Down Bad Books is hosted by me, Nathan Brown, who you can follow on Instagram and Twitter at NathanBrown90. Thanks for listening and happy reading. 